Hey, what's going on, fellas? In the foundry furnace world, there is a heat barrier similar to the sound barrier in the aviation industry. And in the heat barrier, no air-driven burner can achieve a temperature greater than 2,900 degrees, even with a good preheat. So that's kind of a limitation. And what we're looking at here is a rocket burner. I am actually adding pure oxygen to the end of this burner using the little injection force that we see here. This particular strategy is called a surface mix combustion. So the gases are mixed at the very surface of the burner and mixed in the flame itself. And those nozzles are aimed at each other to convert. And the oxygen jets collide with each other in the middle of that flame. And that helps uh, the mixing action and it helps it combust a little bit more stable. Now the strategy we're going to deploy on this thing is it will be stuck inside of a foundry furnace heated up to a temperature of 2,650 degrees because that's about the maximum you can get with the standard foundry setup. And once we hit that temperature, we will then add oxygen for that last minute or two in the foundry burner, burner process to then melt the camshafts or the nickel, or stainless steel, whatever high temp alloy we're attempting to melt should be easily melted with this new burner. I'm calling this the rocket burner. And the reason is because it's about five times as loud as your average compressed air foundry furnace burner. So here's the situation. Your average spud burner propane burner, let's say this was just a propane spud burner that you hook up to a propane tank. The hottest you can get those things with just a naked flame temperature is about 1920 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to get the temperature of a fuel hotter, you have to burn more fuel in a smaller area. And the only way to do that is to mix it faster and to add more oxygen. So that is why the compressed air feature of these burners enables you to achieve temperatures as high as 2,650 degrees Fahrenheit. And without the compressed air setup, you would never get a foundry furnace that hot without this. So by adding these two oxygen injectors, that aim towards each other. They come together at a point, like they're aimed at an angle so that they hit each other. And that will allow us to burn way more fuel in a smaller area, and that is what increases the temperature so drastically. So, your average burner cannot achieve a temperature higher than about 2,700 degrees in one of these foundry furnaces. It just can't do it. 2,900 degrees is the hottest you can get with a sophisticated preheat system. And to get any hotter than that, the reason why there's a limit to that is because you can only burn so much fuel in that space with that much oxygen. In order to get more oxygen in there, you've got to start removing nitrogen from the equation. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to dump excess fuel into this foundry furnace that I'm repairing. And... After it's been running for about 15 minutes to get the items in the crucible up to temperature, we'll then hit it with a quick surge of oxygen at the last moment to initiate the melt. So we're not going to be running this thing on oxygen the whole time. That is not the strategy I'm attempting to deploy, attempting to deploy here. So don't beat me up in the comments thinking this is just going to be too expensive to be practical. It may be, but if you've got to melt some camshafts down, sometimes you've got to get a little bit more sophisticated than the average setup. So that's the strategy in mind here is only turn on the oxygen the moment that the forge or the foundry furnace has achieved a temperature of 2,650 degrees Fahrenheit because that is the maximum temperature obtainable by your standard air compressor burners, even with one as sophisticated as the Godzilla burner with the preheat line. So you can get about 50 degrees hotter than that with propane. We're gonna be using diesel.